welcome to bsc statistics students and i'm explaining one more problem in test for two proportions in test for two proportions so i explain two problems this is the third problem you see the problem before an increasing in excise duty on t 800 persons out of a sample of 1000 persons were found to be tea drinkers Again, uh, once again, I read it. Before an increasing in excise duty on tea, so there is a one particular uh, excise duty. Uh, before increasing excise duty on tea, 800 persons out of a sample of 1000 persons were found to be tea drinkers. So, this is uh, one sample it is given. Uh, we can consider this is N1, 1000 persons out of which 800 persons uh, consume tea. They are tea drinkers, they consume tea. That is, uh, it is a test for proportions. It is a test for proportions. Uh, continue the data, continue uh, uh, reading the data. After an increasing in excise duty, 800 people were tea drinkers in a sample of 1200 people you see that is uh, here are the two samples these are the two samples you have to consider after increasing excise duty 800 people that is x2 out of what tea drinkers in a sample of 1200 people that is n2 is equal to 1200 and out of which uh, x2 is equal to 800 that is uh, number of successes which means uh, number of tea drinkers who consume tea are 800 that is the data is given up to here we can understand that uh, n1 is 1000 and x2 x1 is 800 and n2 is 1200 and x2 is equal to 800 again so this is the data it is given to us and now you say continue the problem of reading the problem test whether there is a significant decrease in the consumption of tea after increasing the excise duty after increasing the excise duty whether the consumption of the tea it is decreased that is question whether there is any there is a decrease in the consu consumption of the tea of the some group of people uh, hope you understand this is what the question it is very clear that uh, whether there is any significant decrease in the consumption of tea after increasing the excise duty so that is, this is what the question is going to be asked to the uh, to test test it right so therefore the given data is n1, n2, x1, x2. So, with that, we can calculate p1, x1 by n1, 800 by 1000, 0.8, p2, small p2, sample proportions, small p2, x2 by n2, 800 by 1200, 0.67. And this is a case where this is what this was not specified capital P. The capital P is not known, it is not given. Then you have to estimate it with the help of P cron is equal to X1 plus X2 by N plus N2. I have specified there are two cases. Capital P is known. It's one case. And capital P is not known. Then you have to estimate it. Another case in which the capital P is going to be calculated or estimated by P cron is equal to X1 plus X2 by N1 plus N2. It's 800 plus 800 divided by 1000 plus 1200. So, it's 16,000, 1600 divided by 2,200 is equal to, there's some Butler value 0 0.7273. Then now, based on this, so you can calculate also Q cron. Q cron also you can calculate uh, with this particular data. The Q cron is equal to 1 minus P cron and uh, it is 0 0.2727 and null hypothesis uh, H naught. Now, we have to formulate Null hypothesis, all the all the points, four points, first one null hypothesis. H naught, P1 is equal to P2 is equal to P. That is, what is the uh, uh, statement we have to test? What is the question uh, we have to test? Test whether there is a significant decrease in the consumption of tea. There is a significant decrease in the consumption of tea. 
Now what you have to do is, uh, it was not decreased. It was, it is same before increasing and after increasing the excise duty, the consumption of tea has no change. That is, uh, the H naught P1 is equal to P2 is equal to P in the null hypothesis we considered. There is no significant difference between the consumption of tea before and after increasing the excise duty. That is the first statement null hypothesis. The second statement alternative hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is, uh, is it clear? Is it visible clearly? No. Yeah. Alternative hypothesis H1, it is P1, it is greater than P2, it is one tile test. What is the statement? Is it not clear? I am waiting a minute, right? Meanwhile, alternative hypothesis is H1 P1 greater than P2. No, it is not clear. You see the alternative hypothesis H1, P1 is greater than P2. Is it clear? Alternative hypothesis H1, P1 is greater than P2. This is one tile test. It is, uh, there is a significant decrease in the consumption of tea after increasing the excise duty. You see the alternative hypothesis is very crucial. They already specified in the problem that uh, is there any significant decrease in the consumption of tea after increasing the excise duty. Now we have to specify that in the alternative hypothesis that uh, there is a significant decrease in the consumption of tea after increasing the excise duty. This is what uh, alternate hypothesis you have to consider. P1 greater than P2. That is P2 is less than P1. P1 refers uh, first population. P2 refers uh, second population. And P1 and P2. P1 refers uh, first population. And P2 refers second population. Therefore, P1 greater than P2. That's what we are considering. That is P2 less than P1. The consumption of tea in the first population is P1. The consumption of uh, tea in the second population is P2. So, decreased. In the second population, it is decreased. After increasing the excise duty, it is decreased. That is, we have to consider, we have to specify that. P2 is less than P1, that is P1 is greater than P2. P2 is less than P1, right? So that is the reason why we can specify P1 greater than P2. P2 is a less value, right? Therefore, the statement is there is a significant decrease in the consumption of T after increasing the excise duty, that is alternative hypothesis. So null and alternative hypothesis were specified, therefore it is one tile test. And the test statistic under H0, third point. The third point is test statistic under H0. It is a case 2. Therefore, Z is equal to what is case 2? Capital P is not given, not known. Then Z is equal to small p1 minus small p2 divided by square root of p cron. This is p cron into q cron into 1 by n1 plus 1 by n2, which follows n01. That is equivalent to be P1 is 0 0.80 minus small p2 is 0 0.67 and divided by square root of P cron, capital P cron, it is 0 0.7273, Q cron 0 0.2727 and uh, multiplied by 1 by N1, 1000, 1 by N2, 1 by 1200 plus. So this value, if you calculate the, this value, it is something 6.842. You calculate clearly and so that uh, the comparison and conclusion, this is 6.8. I have explained many number of times that 
if modulus of z is greater than 3 you need not refer any kind of value always h naught is rejected our conclusion must be if modulus of z is 6.8 here so if modulus of z is greater than 3 it is always uh, uh, rejecting h naught we reject h naught we always reject null hypos h naught at any level of significance so therefore what is uh, h naught h naught is there is no significant difference between the consumption of t before and after increasing the excise duty the h naught is rejected that is h1 is accepted what is h1 h1 is there is a significant decrease in the consumption of t so therefore we are accepting h1 that is uh, the consumption of t was decreased there is a significant decrease in the consumption of t that is consumption of t was decreased after increasing the excise duty so some particular excise duty uh, after increasing the excise duty the consumption of t was decreased that is our conclusion hope you understand thank you thank you so much